Welcome back. This is our last video for 4.6, and I know some of you are going, oh my gosh, thank goodness. Um, so let's go ahead and get through it. Uh, so we're going to do example D. Uh, and again, pay attention to the domain. So you have that X in the denominator, so we know there's a vertical asymptote right at X is equal to zero. Now, if you remember from the previous section, if the numerator has the bigger degree and more than, um, and only off by one, then there's an oblique asymptote in there. So this one, it fulfills that, um, that definition, so, or requirement to be an oblique asymptote. So there's no horizontal, because um, if you took the limits, it'd go off to infinities. Uh, but there is an oblique asymptote, so there is a diagonal one in there. I'm not expecting you to know where it is or how to find it. Just be aware that that's the type of asymptote that's that's going to be in here. Okay, so we're going to go off of the first derivative. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to split this up. I'm going to take that function, and I'm just going to split it as x squared over x. plus one over x and reduce it. So that would be x plus x to the negative one. And it's not something that you have to do. Um, it's just if I do it this way, then I don't have to use the quotient rule. And I could have done that for the last function uh, or the last example that we did uh, on the previous video, but uh, now you have two different ways to, to, to go for it. So again, this is still the function. And I'll take the derivative of this stuff. So the derivative of x is just one. Derivative of that is a negative x to the negative second. So one minus one over x squared. Uh, get a common denominator, put it together into one fraction x squared minus 1 over x squared, and then I'll set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So the denominator gives me a solution of 0, because that's where it's undefined, and the numerator would say, hey, it's plus or minus 1. So now I know at the 0, it's not going to yield a max or a min, because that's where I have a vertical asymptote. Uh, but I still need a do a sign chart and test it. <clears throat> okay, so let's use some test numbers. So let's go with negative 2, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and positive 2. So I'm going to plug these into the derivative and if you notice the denominator is just an x squared so the denominator is going to be positive no matter what you do so it's really just dependent upon the top so if i plug in the negative two <clears throat> that's going to come out as a positive plug in the negative 0.5 <clears throat> that comes out as a negative and if i plug in the positive 0.5 that also comes out as a negative and the positive two goes back to positive. So I have intervals of increasing from negative infinity to negative one. And again, from one to infinity. And then it's decreasing from negative one to zero. And then from zero to one. I'm not going to merge this all in a, into one interval, so I'm not going to say negative one to one because zero is, not again, not part of my domain, so i got to leave them separated. If it was part of the domain, then yes, I could totally merge them together and say negative one to one, and you should uh, if, if it's possible. So now I know I have a relative max when x is negative one. So I'm going to go all the way back up to my function and stick it in there. So when x is negative 1, 
it comes out as a negative two. And I have a relative min because the derivative switched from minus to plus right at one. So when x is one, plug it into the function and the y value comes out as a positive two. All right, so now let's get your concavity stuff. So your derivative, let's go off of this one, the one minus x to the negative two. Uh, so the one just goes away, its derivative is zero. Derivative of negative x to the negative two is two x to the negative three. Flip it to the denominator, set it equal to zero and x is zero, because that's what makes the second derivative undefined. Uh, but again, there's not gonna be an actual point there because it's not part of the domain. But concavity could still switch, so let's see what happens. So choose my test numbers, negative one and one. I'm gonna plug them into the second derivative, either this one or this one, not gonna matter. So I plug in the negative one, it comes out as a minus. Plug in the positive one, and it's a plus. So it's concave up from zero to infinity and concave down from negative infinity to zero and no inflection point. Even if you forget, if you say, hey, there is one, you should come to that same conclusion when you try to plug it in and you realize you can't. All right, so let's put it all together and get a nifty graph. Okay, so we have a vertical asymptote at zero. So it's gonna increase uh, all the way to x equals negative one, and then it's gonna switch directions. And your relative max is sitting down here, which is kind of weird, um, but, but it is what it is. So it's gonna increase until it gets to x equals negative one, and then it's gonna switch directions, and it's gonna decrease. And it continues to decrease when x is between zero and one. So it, it can't, like it's not gonna connect over, it's not gonna cross your uh, the y-axis and keep going down uh, from here. It's gonna have to start back up at the top. And it's gonna decrease until it gets to x equals one. And that's where you've got your min, and then it's gonna increase again. So something like this. And that matches up to your concavity. You said it was concave up on this side and concave down on this side. So now earlier I said, hey, you've got an oblique asymptote. Um, there is one in here. It's just on a sketch. Um, we're not being too specific. If you graph this with Desmos or your calculator, what it would do is it actually, um, the graph would look something like, this it kind of is like a lopsided parabola on the bottom and then another one on the top because in the oblique asymptote would be going like this so i'm not asking you to find this and be too you know that specific about it because again these are just sketches they are not works of art um so if you draw something like this that is totally fine um <clears throat> Because again, it's not anything that's terribly specific. Um, you don't need to label your points and stuff if you have them all listed out right here. Uh, if you don't state any of this, then you're going to have to label your graph or, or do something to tell me where those extrema are, any inflection points, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you have them stated off to the side, then just stick the point in there and I'll be able to go, hey, yeah, that's the relative min and that's the relative max. All right, um, so there's the section. So good luck, go ahead and try the problems out. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, 
Zoom during office hours, um, and I'll talk to you guys later.